Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we are doing part two of the A Open Mystery PC. Now, before I continue into this video, I just want to make a correction to my very first video that I made on this system. I claimed it was from 1994 because of a sticker that was inside this PC, and, and uh, a viewer had made a comment on the, um, on the previous video indicating that this PC was no way made in 1994, uh, mainly because, and it makes total sense, mainly because the Socket 7 uh, wasn't even included till then, and I also alluded to the fact the BIOS must have been updated, and it, I kind of, you know, threw me a little bit at the time and uh, I'm just so glad that the viewer had made that comment and then it made me to go back and look and on the back of the system there's a sticker that says build date of December of 1996 so I just wanted to make that clear and updated um, on the um, on the channel uh, for this video before I before I go further okay so for today's video what we're going to do is take the system completely apart we need to get that motherboard out of there uh, to be able to um, uh, to be able to get uh, the CMOS, uh, sorry, the real-time clock chip out of there, that Dallas chip uh, that's right there. We need to be able to get that out of the system and to be able to uh, desolder it uh, from the motherboard. So, um, yeah, so we're going to start by just removing some of the um, some of the ribbon cabling just to clear up some of the uh, work area here before we start removing cards and things like that. And um, I didn't see any comments yet on anyone's guesses as to what size this hard drive is. I, I uh, have not uh, to this moment, still have no idea what the size of the hard drive is. Again, the BIOS wouldn't auto detect it um, as well as um, uh, we haven't been able to get any further into the system. So again, remains the mystery. So let's go ahead and just remove some of these uh, ribbon cables. And I guarantee you these have not been removed since the day they were installed. And um, yeah, so it's a, it's going to be a uh, exciting experience here working together to remove these. And we'll just remove that from the board there as well. So you can see the rubber bands uh, on, have literally disintegrated because it's like they're stuck and disintegrated to the ribbon cable here. Look, just because they just been sitting there so long and untouched that, uh, yeah, there's nothing left of that rubber band. So we're gonna clean that off as well. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, IDE cable that was running from the motherboard to the hard drive. And we'll do the same uh, for the uh, CD-ROM drive um, IDE cable that runs down here. We're just gonna pull it up uh, briefly here. There we go. Um, yeah, just great having those connectors right on the motherboard and we'll go back up to the, um, um, to the, uh, to the actual drive itself and pull it from the back of the drive. And I do have spare IDE cables in case, you know, um, over time these cables can go bad. Now, time doesn't necessarily do that to them. It's generally, you know, movement of the actual cable back and forth, um, that can do that. But you can clearly see how clean the system is. As I indicated in the last video, the owner who had donated this uh, indicated that they had bought it again for business and just never ever used the system and uh, put it away. And so before, because it wasn't running, um, it wasn't a Hoover vacuum. It wasn't sucking a whole bunch of dust into the actual system, which was pretty cool to, uh, to see. So, so let's go ahead and pull that out very carefully. And the same thing back from the back of the cable. I generally like to pry from the middle and then ease it back and forth left to right um, just to be sure that I'm not uh, going to do any damage to the cable itself and you know, this piece is coming off. Uh, there's again a piece of that rubber band that's just disintegrated. Pull that off and another piece I believe of that rubber band came off here and you can see that it's just crazy. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we now have that away. I'm just gonna clean up some of the other rubber band I think fell down on the side here in the system. I don't want any of that sitting on the motherboard. Not that we can't see it later. You may as well clean it up as we go. All right, so that's out of there. Okay, now we're just gonna um, remove the power cables from the, um, from the, uh, actually, we, we don't really have to. This, this case, the nice thing about this case that I noticed looking at prior to um, prior to the video is the back plane on this case, just like our 386 actually comes off as one piece. You don't actually have to, uh, fiddle around inside the case while it's together. You can, you know, just take out the cards, remove the uh, indicator, uh, LEDs and, uh, and, and remove, of course, the CPU power, but then that's pretty much it. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't actually have to, um, remove the, um, 
the motherboard working within the case. You can just flip it around and, and remove it that way. So we're, we are going to do that. But again, not knowing what the hard drive size is, I am going to work on, I am going to take that out and show everybody what that is. Okay. So um, now this case, of course, comes with the breakout cables for your printer, for your COM ports one and two. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with that and just remove them now. I don't have to theoretically remove them because the case will come out from behind. I don't actually have to remove them from the um, from the case itself, but I am going to uh, just to um, um, just to uh, have them for good measure. And uh, I've already taken a picture of all this anyway, so we know how to put everything back together anyway. Um, but that's okay. So this is COM ports uh, one and two uh, that I'm going to be removing from the motherboard. There we are. So that's over there. It just makes for a cleaner environment when you're trying to try to work on the system. Um, and again, in our last 386 video of taking it down and doing the work, we actually went ahead and took uh, isopropyl alcohol. We took the brush. We went through the anti static brush, cleaned everything out. We don't have to do that on this board. It's just absolutely clean. I know I keep on saying it over and over again. I just can't believe a system from 1996 <laughs> is, um, is as clean as it is. Uh, just well maintained, well looked after, and not used hardly. So it's just crazy to think that. Okay, I'm gonna, this is the this is I believe the yep the parallel port uh, connector there. So that's uh, hooking up a printer and what have you to the uh, to the system. So that's been removed now. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to clear up a little more uh, space for us to work in, which is which is great. And yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is remove the. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at everything here. We're going to remove the, the next thing. We're going to move the video card here, I think. Um, I'm just looking how we're going to move the power supply from here. We may have to flip it around first to access it because this hard drive is actually screwed into on both sides. Um, some people back in the day cheated and just put the two screws on one side that were accessible, easily accessible, sorry. And as a result, um, did not always uh, put screws on the other side, which made it, of course, easy. You can slide it out and things like that. But uh, because of where this this um, assembly is connected, it's hard for me to reach in uh, to the actual power supply cables to connect to the motherboard. So I think what we're going to have to do is take out these cards, um, disconnect this. Um, this is very tightly wound in there. So they had done a very good job at doing cable management here with the power. So I'm going to have to unhook um, these uh, cables to be able to remove the, um, remove the power supply, or sorry, the CPU fan cooler here as well okay back to the video card let's go ahead and remove that went on a bit of a tangent there just trying to trying to figure out a game plan as we go through this all right now one thing i alluded to in the last video is um the actual video card itself so this is an s3 verge um uh, sorry s3 trio trio 64v plus video with uh, expandable memory which has been expanded and um, I had to remove, actually it was this chip here, I had to remove from the board uh, from the from this because um, it just wasn't working. It was giving me the error codes as it was trying to boot. And so I was able to fix that by going ahead and using Deoxit. And that Deoxit is what enabled me to get this card back and running. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is remove the, I believe, is the sound card from the system. So there's this little audio cable that runs from the back of the CD-ROM drive all the way down to the um, to the sound card, and it just really pops off straight. Nothing, uh, nothing major there, and that allows you to put a CD in the drive and just play music uh, right from the right from the CD-ROM drive using an audio player on the computer. All right, so let's go ahead and grab my screwdriver here open this up all right we have that out and i usually just put my hand on the outside of the case while i'm pulling this up just to kind of help it um, from the slot it's as long as the slot is so this is an isa um, card so it says fx16 on it and that's all i see it's audio 1868 on the card and I don't have much more information on this card. Just a game port and line in, line out, and mic. Yeah, I, I, ESS audio drive is the um, chipset that's on here. 
So if you know what, uh, look at those little wavetable connectors as well. Hmm. If you know what, uh, who makes this, unless FX15 is, the, I've never heard of the, to be honest with you, I've never heard of the, uh, this brand before, FX16, if that is a brand. Be interesting to see, and I, I plan on looking up after the video for sure. Okay, so uh, that's out now. Looking much more like a sparse system now, of course. Okay, now we have what we believe to be as our modem. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and open that up. There we are, and we'll slide that modem right over there. Okay, and there we are. We have our modem, and I indicated this was US Robotics. Yeah, sure enough, there it is there. It's a US Robotics. And from what I understand, 1995, copyright on the back of it. I believe based on the paperwork I went through, there's nothing written on the on the system here. I don't see a model. Um, I believe it is a I believe it's a 288336 modem. It's not a 56k modem. Uh, it's definitely in the 33 or 288336 realm. I'd have to look up the model number to confirm. Okay, so we have that out now, and here's our our I/O um, front panel reset. Um, all those all those LEDs. We're just going to pull them out now. I did take a picture of these. Always a good idea to take a picture of these little guys here because they're always fun in quotes to uh, to put back on um takes quite a bit of troubleshooting i mean it doesn't do any damage it's just more of a it can be a pain trying to take them out if you're if you're working on the system there okay so we have this we have a couple options here so um i'm just concerned about this this power cable running to the cpu supply here and i, I see where it's connected i just well, there's not a lot of room to work with in there with the hard drive in there so i think the next logical step is to take the um, let's see if I could just shift this out a little bit. I might be able to get that out that way. Just because I don't want to, I don't want to try to take that CPU out at the same time. Yeah, okay, there we go. Right, so there's the power cables coming through. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and snip off the cable management that they've done here just because I want to make sure I can get in there and get that. Uh, Get that out of there. I'll do this carefully without actually doing any damage to any of the wiring. And I'm just using the side cutters here just to uh, to do that. Okay, and this should free itself up there. Yeah, sure enough, there we go. Okay, that's probably your better option for what we were trying to do there. And I mean, these CPU coolers generally are pretty adhered um actually this one may not be this one may be pretty pretty simple to remove there yeah i don't want to do that just yet because i don't want to have to start replacing any of the paste that on there it might be a good idea just because of the age of it but we'll look at that a little later okay so we have the um we have the power removed from the cpu cooler all that's left now is to remove the power from the um, from the actual motherboard itself. So I'm going to flip the case around because because of what we talked about earlier, I know that this has the ability to um, to do the I'm um, sorry to do the backplane removal here on the on the motherboard itself, as you can see. And I think when we remove this out, we'll be able to have access to the um, hard drive, but also have the access to be able to remove the power from the uh, from the header there. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that from here. Uh, these are quite uh, quite tight in there. There's only three of them, and this should just tilt right out once I uh, once I remove that. There, these are all just standard screws. There's nothing nothing fancy about them, so don't need to worry about putting them aside or separating them or what have you. I know on a 386 case it was a little bit a little tougher. All right, there we are. Now knowing that that's connected, I'm just going to flip it around here nicely just to see and there we are so we have our motherboard and we have our um there we go we have our motherboard out now and we have our wiring here so it's there's no strain on this at all so it's uh, probably the best way to do that so i'm just going to go ahead and um, pop those out from the uh, from the case there you see that this a little concerned about 
the, the solder joints on that, to be honest. Looks like the actual connector itself is a little loose on the motherboard. So I'm just gonna, just to be safe, I'm just gonna take a small flathead and use that to open up what's needed there because I just, I don't wanna put too much pressure on that connector and, and unfortunately do any more damage. I'll check, this, I'll check the solder joints while I'm there later on. So I'm just gonna take that off there. Keeping in mind that this hasn't been removed in quite a while or ever. <laughs> All right. You can tell the plastic is pretty, uh, pretty brittle there. There we go. Okay. They're out now. Okay. So we're just going to put this aside for a moment, the motherboard. We're going to come back to that. Um, to take it off the to take it off the case or the case all right so there's this mystery hard drive we keep on talking about or at least i do anyway i don't know who else is listening to me <laughs> i really want to know the capacity of it to be honest so i don't have yes yeah, so the way it works i believe is that this slides out so i'm going to go ahead and flip it back around and i was under the assumption that there were two screws holding that in on that and it doesn't seem to be it might be something that just slides in there so let's just go ahead and remove this from the on the bay there let's go back and focus here guys sorry oh yeah sure enough look at that just slides right out like a rail okay perfect all right we have a seagate uh of course the model is not on oh st31276 a and it's not telling me on the drive itself Oh yeah, it's 1.2 or it's 1275 megabytes. So 1.2 gig hard drive. Well, there we go. We have a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive. Our mystery has been solved in terms of the storage capacity on the hard drive. Now I can sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, just screw that back in because that doesn't need to be out of the system. So now we know what that is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the tower. I mean, nothing else needs to come out of here. CD-ROM is not in the way. Uh, the floppy drive or the caddy is not in the way. The hard drive is not in the way either. I mean, it, theoretically it was. I thought it was. I thought the screw was the same on the other side. I couldn't see it because of the way the motherboard was configured. But knowing it's um, knowing what it is now where the back plane came right off, it's not, uh, not something that's required. So let's just take that out of the way now. All right. So we have our motherboard itself. And let's go ahead and just clean up the desk here a little bit, just because the, again, more, more uh, disintegrated, disintegrated, uh, yeah, screw, good old uh, elastics. All right. Now, for the, uh, for the motherboard itself, we don't have to do too much to this. We're just going to have to remove the, um, yeah, we're just going to have to remove the actual motherboard from the back plane itself. Let's go ahead and flip this around and uh, you'll see that it's mounted by a couple of screws that we have here. There's four screws that I see and then a couple of uh, actually just one interlocking standoff and and there's some other yeah, there's some rubber standoffs in there as well. Okay, so nothing uh, nothing too fancy. So let's just go ahead and do that. <coughs> Sorry. All right. Let's go ahead and remove this. There should be four screws. Now, the nice thing, regardless of the effort that we're going through um, in, in uh, fixing this particular system to get this chip out of there, it's much better than dealing with a Varda battery or one of those uh, barrel batteries, as we talked about before, um, where it leaks all over the motherboard. And when it leaks all over the motherboard, it does considerable damage if, if that battery acid is left on, you know, usually eating away at traces or or any other areas. Now see what I mean? That, uh, that power connector seems pretty loose in there. <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and look at that just to see. Okay, now let's see if I can slide that out of there easily. Oh yeah, look at that. Just like butter. Okay. So before I do anything there, 
I'm just gonna be, let me just see. I'm just gonna grab my other mat there. I just wanna put something else underneath that so that there's nothing in the way. And then we can get that um, properly set up for what we're trying to do here. There we are. I just find that that's much easier on the board. It's a softer surface as well. All right. So we have our we have our motherboard. This is the A open uh, motherboard as indicated in our last video. And I believe um, the model on this is the <coughs> A AP five VM um, version. Uh, sorry, revision two point three. So that's awesome. And um, yeah, let's just take a look here to see if I can. Um, I mean, these these are fairly simple to um, move from the motherboard. Just to take that off and the processor let's go ahead and just uh, remove the processor from the cooler if we can um no okay so the fan itself oh no it does it does all come off at once okay so let's go see what the processor is as well here and there's zero um compound there by the looks of things I believe it's a 133. Yep, I believe it's a Pentium 133. Yep. Pentium 133. Okay. So maybe it didn't require um, the the compound, just act, you know, pa uh, active cooling that's on it. Um, but again, I know my M MMX processors and things like that definitely required it. I mean, there's none on there now. Best practice maybe to put some compound on there, um, which we, again, um, for the sake of today's video, we're just going to uh, focus on um, desoldering that uh, dowels chip. <coughs> so I'm gonna put this back in just because, and, and to put this back in, just notice that the notch uh, that's on here, the indentation matches here. Uh, it's very important that it's put in the right way uh, to make sure that all the things, and I never force it. I just, like I said, just uh, in just a little bit, just to make sure it goes in. And then you just close it down and that's it. There's nothing more to it. That's it. It just stays right in there. Just let it sit in there and you're good to go. Okay. So now let me just uh, take a look here. And we're going to go ahead now and flip it over and do the um, uh, go ahead and uh, work on removing that Dallas chip. All right, here we go. So there's the back of the motherboard. I mean, you can see the rubber feet that they had on it. The, uh, in, uh, the um, standoff that locks into the back plane over there. And then there are four screw areas. So um, here, the Dallas real-time chip is right here. Um, it's, yeah, just right here. These, this row of, of um, pins here and the row of pins right here. That's where the Dallas. So we're just going to have to remove that. And I'm just going to look at the power while I'm here because just like I said, I was a little concerned about how flimsy that was. And so I may end up reflowing those. Like, yeah, so the actual pins themselves aren't moving. It's just when it was soldered onto the board originally, probably from factory, it seems to be a little higher than the actual PCB itself. And so as a result, it just gives it some flex. So maybe that's not too concerning. Um, for the amount of times that we'd be actually using it. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any issues with any of the solder joints or any high level <laughs> indicators that there's any sort of um, issues in terms of cracks. I mean, I realized that without getting an actual microscope and things like that, it's harder to see. Uh, but no, I think we're, I think we're going to be good there. It's, it's a little... I, mean, I was pretty gentle taking that off by using the screwdriver, so I think we're pretty safe uh, on that. Okay, let's get the uh, desoldering gun now, and we're going to go ahead and um, and uh, desolder this. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this around, and uh, yeah, let's just see if we can remove that Dallas chip from the uh, from the motherboard. Make sure I'm doing the right one here. Now that solder, 
I'm just realizing is fairly, I mean, not just realizing, I mean, I've been talking about the whole video, but being so old and, uh, Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to add some solder to those pins first, just to add new solder to the board, uh, and then it'll make it easier to remove um, that solder from the board. Okay, so we have the soldering station all set up here, and the reason we add um, new solder to these joints is because the solder over the years just gets really, really difficult to heat up. And uh, by adding a little bit of new solder, it just introduces, um, yeah, it just introduces uh, um, some new life to the existing solder. So it's just easier to melt and what have you. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, add a little bit of solder to both of these, or to both these rows of pins and we'll be good to go there. You don't need a lot, just enough to just enough to do what we're trying to do here. Okay, so the first row, there's a couple of blank pins. Um, the RTC chip doesn't actually have, um, doesn't require all of the, um, bridge the two together. <laughs> I'm sorry, let's get that cleaned up there. It's just a lot of solder I put on there. Um, but the RTC chip doesn't require all of the actual, um, uh, pins, so not all of them are used. Okay, two more. There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the soldering gun there, and we're gonna go ahead and desolder those pins now. Oh, being awfully stubborn, I tell you. There's an equal balance of not leaving on the board too much, but just enough to heat up. The pins. There we go. Yeah, much better now. Just need a little bit more persuasion on that guy. Two are definitely in there pretty good. I might have to add more solder to them and try them again. Let's go to the bottom row now. Ah! Uh. 
That's where I'd apply a little, a little too much solder when I was putting on new stuff, but that was okay. Solder uh, gun makes short work of that, that's for sure. I should say the desoldering gun. All right, now back to these two guys. So I have, oh wait, oh, yeah, okay. So they're all out um, everywhere. And then the two little, the few little dots you see still there are just, there's no pins in them. But then these two guys are just not um, wanting to come out. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just gonna apply a little more solder to those two and try to remove them again. And then we'll get that, uh, we'll get that removed there. Okay, we're up enough. Those are the first two we did. See if this works this time. Well, it's definitely being stubborn still. Let's see if I can move those pins at all. Yeah, so that pin's moving, that's fine. Um, this guy here is really in there. Yeah, okay, seems I broke the solder there now. I think we're good now. Okay, there we go. All right, let's turn this around and uh, expose our chip again to the public. And that should just, assuming that we did what we needed to do, come right out of there. And so far it's not, but that's okay. And I'm just looking at all the pins to make sure they're all good. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious when they're not uh, with no solder around them. But it shouldn't be too difficult to, to get out just reminding ourselves that this hasn't been removed since factory days. Oh. Oh, this one doesn't seem to be removed. This one's good. That one's good. That was good, I think. All right, let's do this one again. I, I didn't see that. Oh, there we go, it came right out. I'm just gonna do these guys again, because, I mean, they're just being very difficult. There, okay. Much clearer now. Let's see if that loosened up the chip any. Yeah, the chip's definitely being stubborn there. Let's see if I can get one of my... Let's see if I can get anything underneath it. Just something that's not going to do any... There we go. Just need a little persuasion. And I'm pulling up. I'm not leveraging the board here. I'm using my my hand as leverage. There, see? So yeah, we have this, uh, you can see in here how we have all the, the solder or the holes. There's a few left in there, as I mentioned, because this doesn't use all the all the pins. And um, yeah, so there's a battery on there and a real-time clock and dated 1996. 
and I mean that matches what we have for replacements here um, yeah I mean there's an A on the end of this one um, I have used these in replacement of A's and there's no problem again date code 96 on these as well we are going to be using the original to go back in um, that's why I didn't want to bend anything too too much there it's not like this is being tossed um, I'll straighten everything up as well uh, on that and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, putting in a new sock <coughs> new socket there as well let me just open that up here there we are so these sockets are meant for that uh, chip so just to try to avoid us from having to put in Yeah, let me go ahead and just remove the last bit of solder from those holes to see if we can fit that in there. I want to make sure that we're not, uh, not running into any obstacles. So we have our socket here. Oh, there's one more. Tricky, tricky. Ah. Right. Tell you that desoldering that makes all the difference in the world. All right. This should just pop in. Very, very little force, if any. There it is. Okay, it is going in. Uh, oh. One pin is not liking me. There's always one. Let's see why it didn't align with the hole there. These pins are very delicate, so they misaligned by even a little bit. It, uh, it won't, uh, won't see correctly in the socket. Just to be safe, I mean, I have many of these. Let's just use another one just to be sure. It wasn't an issue when I was removing it from the package. There, so it's pretty straightforward there. And they all look aligned. And we're going to do the same thing again. Just drop it in. There we are. And I'm just whittling it back and forth just a little bit so it goes in nice and easily. So far, so good. There, there we go. There, we have a socket. So the intention here is that when this goes back in with the modification, it literally will just sit in that sit in that uh, that socket. Let's make sure there's enough room there. That's our challenge, I think. Um, yeah, no, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be bad. Yeah, no, that'll, that'll sock it in nicely. Okay. So the intention here is that, you know, again, to my point earlier is that all that work we did just to remove the, the, the real-time chip from the board and desoldering it, the next time we wouldn't have to with this, uh, this socket in here. All right, let's just solder that back on the board. And then we could do some cleanup. This just promotes uh, solder to go where it needs to go. And this is just a flux pen, um, no clean flux pen. I mean, I clean anyway. Uh, but uh, again, just if you're wondering what I'm using, okay, well, that should uh, promote the required flux, the required uh, solder there. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. There, nicely. It's working nicely. All right, we'll continue on down. All right. That looks like it's in there really, really well. And I'm just going to take the... Yeah, no, I think that looks pretty good, actually. I don't see any uh, the, um, connectors between them and the chip, I believe. Oh, sorry, the socket looks to be extremely flush with the board, which is exactly what we want. So there we go. We have a nice socketed, uh, socketed. Uh, uh, socket ready for the chip. So we're just going to spray a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol on that and just give a little bit of a clean here just to remove any sort of flux residue uh, from the board just to make sure we're completely cleaned up there. There, just like that. Just so I can get a good look at everything. And I believe we're good there. Very, very, very tiny work environment. I just want to be sure that all my pins are where they need to be without any sort of breaks. I see a little, there's a little more solder on one of them here. So I'm just going to do that while we're together here. Just good to double check because sometimes when you, when you're working away on this and you, um, um, when you're working away on this and you don't see that, what happens is that, uh, I mean, exactly that. It's just, you have all the flux residue and stuff like that around there it can give you the the impression that um it's there but when in fact it's um oh, sorry, it's coming apart there <laughs> um but yeah uh it just gives you the impression there was some solder there i mean there's enough solder in there but i just want to add enough that uh, it just 100 percent sure it just doesn't hurt to put that in there that one does look good, actually. Okay. okay. All right. A little last bit of cleanup there. And that's it. And one of the um, other tricks you learn as you do this is just take your paper towel and just do this on it. And it just... Uh, promotes and removes any stuff from the board there. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty darn good. All right. So that's what we're going to stop for today's video. Uh, in, in today's next video, sorry, we're going to go ahead and uh, reassemble uh, the system. Um, sorry. In the next video, we're going to um, do the modification to the Dallas chip. We're going to actually expose the connectors and attach a barrel, uh, sorry, a button battery um, to this. And then ultimately what we'll do is um, connect a, a coin cell. So uh, yeah, it should be pretty, uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Once we have that connected, the two leads and we have the battery on, we can just go ahead and reinsert this back into the motherboard. And then we'll be able to, um, yeah, we'll be able to assemble the system back together and, and uh, finally find out what is on this mystery PC. Because again, this computer won't boot uh, without uh, this chip and the modification that we're, we're doing today. All right. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, this is, um, again, part uh, one of a series. I'm as you can see, I've done a couple of these now. And if you like these types of videos where it's broken up and you like to see the different uh, repair videos or different things like that, please leave a comment below and let me know. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a, uh, give it, um, a thumbs up and a like, uh, uh, hit the notification button up top and you'll be notified when there's new uh, content being created such as this. 
And um, yeah, so again, I hope you liked today's video. Thanks for taking the time, uh, spending the day with me uh, doing this. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Hope everyone has a great day. Bye-bye.